This complaint runs through all parts of Okrika local government area as the town is bordered by water on all sides. Ayungu Biri Fish Market has been in existence for decades in Okarika. In fact, it is one of the trademarks of the area and we are told that this place actually used to be busier than it is now. However, it still serves as a means of livelihood for the women who are selling the fish and also for the men who have to go into the sea to get the fish and other creatures of the sea for sale here. And at the end of the day, this place feeds this community. For visitors to the market, things look normal. There are fishes on the women's trays, sacks of crayfish, perumuncola and oyster. But those who have been here for a while say things are not normal. When you came in here, we didn't see the kind of fishes we normally see here in the market because of the pollution. And most of them that has gone to the sea, they are not even arrived yet because of the distance where they go and look for fish. Unlike before, they don't go that far to get the fish. A closer look at the environment also shows a sorry state of living. Residents have to endure stagnant water, which is telling on buildings, and wasn't by lack of effective management of waste and appropriate structures. In another part of Okrika, Okariyama, the pollution is compounded with the proximity of the jetty to the people. From here, products are transferred to various locations in the country. Also connected are pipes carrying PMS, DPK, AGO, cooking gas, black oil, crude and water, the means of transporting the finished and raw materials. All these are close to the resident. While the pipes seem like a play place for children or a sit-out area, it comes with great risk. Sometimes it explodes like fuel leaks. If you, if you go there like there now, in 2003, there was an explosion here at the bend corner there. The refinery refused to come. They refused to come. It was the hand of the work of God. If not, this community would have gone. The same thing happened at the jetty. We are many so lost. So it's very dangerous. The people's grudge against the authorities is also in the area of empowering the youth. We have graduates. What, what technology, do, what, type, what type of graduates do we need that we cannot boast of? If you can see some of the oil facilities built, like uh, power plants and uh, uh, gas plants and so on. When the subcontractors built those plants. After building, federal government will bring other people from all other communities, all other states, and send them for training abroad, and bring them to mine the plants that were built in our domain. How can we have the we have the we have the quality of youths that can manage those areas? A section of the Nigerian society alleged that one factor which has fueled the agitation is lack of transparency and equity among elders of the community towards contribution and efforts to alleviate the plight of the people of the region. How can you uh, negotiate with companies and around you and uh, they give the leaders money? Or No, no, we don't take money. What we need is developmental projects. There is no chief, no king, no person will uh, uh, discuss with companies to be given money. No. What we will discuss, major issues we do discuss with companies is one, community developmental projects. Two, employment process, employment of our youths. Three, empowerment. Com that we have uh, community contractors. They should be empowered. Although it's a common voice asking for solution to the challenges of survival in the region, Many say the approach of the Avengers is doing more harm than good. When you have a good case, God will answer your case. But not by destroying the country, economy. Not by sabotaging. We've had enough. Destroying pipeline. <laughs> what, the, what are the consequences? The pipeline is blown up. The oil comes out. It pollutes our water.
Individuals from all the parts of the country have also shown concern and listed the disadvantages of the approach of violence. This is just madness as far as I'm concerned. You continue to blow this thing, they continue to use their money to repair it, you know, to, and there's a lot of things. And uh, that is just one aspect. The second aspect is the environmental problem you are causing. And you are causing it to your immediate community. Because this thing is just like war. Anybody that calls war to his own uh, house or his uh, fatherland or, is, is a fool. Because in the process of doing everything, look at Syria. Look at uh, Iraq. Would you want anything near that to happen to you? I don't think what they are doing is right. If they have grievances, we have a president that listens. We have a president that is very, very compassionate. We have a president that uh, says, I don't want to steal anything yours. I don't want to do anything. I just want to manage what you have. I want to see you live good. So if you have grievances, you know, you have, uh, you have representatives from local government, state government, federal government, and the security and everything, come to the negotiating table. After all, after all the federal government extended an olive branch, said let's discuss. So this would not solve the problem. This olive tree has been embraced by the Avengers as they have finally agreed to dialogue with the federal government with a request that Nobel laureate Wally Shoinka acts as their representative. I wish to make an appeal to the government to respond positively, respond positively to the outreach from the militant groups. That is a request which has been made by some of the groups who got me into this interventionist role in the first place. At the moment, they feel that the government of General Buhari, President Buhari, I should say, is not seriously responding to their own outreach. And I wish to make a personal appeal to the government to respond positively. And let us see where it ends us. So I make that appeal once more to the government. Please respond to the efforts of these uh, militant groups to arrive at a holistic and comprehensive solution. It is in the mind that the war for peace must begin. And I always find that uh, rather paradoxical uh, statement very, very instructive. But we mustn't simplify wars. This recent stand of the Avengers receives the blessing of the elders of the land. Uh, it is proper we dialogue. Dialogue is the key to success. You see, uh, destroying our uh, oil facilities or, or, or federal government facilities around us, we are still encouraging uh, more danger to ourselves. What uh, we, the elders, the leaders, want is dialogue, peaceful dialogue. Federal government should give us listening ears to dialogue, not by tricks. Sometimes uh, when there is politics, when they want to contest election, federal government will come up to uh, promise uh, people this seven or eight, but at the, at the end, when they succeed, they did nothing. They do nothing for the people. But other quarters also call for caution and deliberate steps to maximize the opportunity of dialogue. It's important for us to define those who should represent us. It's not about the governors. The governors have their way of talking, but it may all be referred to as politics. But the leaders, it's not about politics. Whether people are in APC or PDP or Labour Party, Select those who will believe genuinely we speak for our people. And not a request that we want to make it, Mr. President. I think that is the best way to go. Because there's a lot going on. A lot of people have been running to have got to pretend to speak for us. Some news are coming there. To answer all, answer all kinds of names, <laughs> pretending to speak for us. That is not the, that's not the way we should go as a people. Because if we do that line, we will give the impression that we are not a people united. And then it becomes difficult for us to achieve results. 